Once again, thank you for visiting my channel. I am the actuarial guy. Uh, today we go on to unit 2 of CT1, that is core technical 1, financial mathematics of the faculty and institute of actuaries. The topic today is the time value of money and I will quickly take you through our objectives. We are going to describe how to take account of the time value of money using the concepts of compound interest and discounting. Under that objective, we will accumulate a single investment at a constant rate of interest under both simple interest and compound interest. We will also define the present value of a future payment and go ahead to discount a single investment under the operation of a simple discount at a constant rate of return. Finally, we will describe how a compound interest model can be used to represent the effect of investing a sum of money over a period. The second objective will be to show how interest rates or discount rates may be expressed in terms of different time periods. Under the objective, we will derive the relationship between rates of interest and discount over one effective period, both arithmetically and by general reasoning. So the first question is, what is interest? Interest may be regarded as a reward paid by one person or organization called the borrower for the use of an asset referred to as capital belonging to another person or organization. Well, let's take the example of you and the, the bank. You could go to the bank and borrow a loan from the bank. Now, in this uh, situation, you are the borrower and the bank is the lender. Uh, considering that you are borrowing a loan, which is money, and this can be expressed in monetary terms, the loan will be called capital. And the extra amount you have to pay the bank for borrowing that loan is what we call interest. So, uh, here, when the capital and interest are expressed in monetary terms, the capital is referred to as principal. So in our example, we borrow cash from the bank, that is principal. And the total received by the lender after a period of time is called the accumulated value. This total here includes the principal and the capital. You get the accumulated value by adding the principal. Oh, excuse me for that. You get the total accumulated value by adding the principal to the amount of interest earned over the period of the investment. Now an example to help you understand this is right here. Uh, now suppose John borrows a thousand pounds from the bank for a period of one year at 5% interest. Uh, calculate the interest John would pay as well as the accumulated value for the bank. Now, we can quickly see that in our case, John is the borrower, while the bank is the lender. Our rate of interest is 5%, while this £1,000 here is the principal. Now, a rate of interest of 5%, at the end of the year, the interest that John has to pay the bank for this loan is given by this uh, calculation here. You get 5% of the principal, which is 50 pounds. 50 pounds is our interest. So the second part asks us to calculate the accumulated value. In our case, at the end of the year, John would have to give the the £1,000 that he initially borrowed from the bank, he would have to give that back to the bank and on top of that he would also pay the bank interest. Our interest was £50 and the amount John borrowed was £1,000. So the interest plus the principal gives you that amount. This is the accumulated value for the bank. 
Uh, straight away, we are going to look at factors that affect rates of the rate of interest. Uh, one of those factors is the risk of default. The risk of default simply has to do with the probability of someone being able to pay back the asset they have borrowed. In cases where the borrower has a high probability or is capable of paying back the amount, uh, back the asset that he borrows, you get the rate of interest being slightly lower. While in cases where there's a high probability of default, there's a high risk of default, there is a high probability that the borrower is will not be able to repay the asset you get that the rate of interest is set slightly higher to take into account the risk faced by the lender of the asset. Another instance that affects rates of interest is the, the value of the currency used in the transaction. This is uh, called, this is affected by depreciation or appreciation. Depreciation simply means the value of the currency decreases while well, appreciation means the value of the currency increases at times the lender of an asset wants to take this into account so that the amount they the accumulated uh, value they receive at the end of investment is a is a true reflection of uh, the situation is a true uh, reflection of the value of the currency and as a result, the situation of the economy. All right, uh, simple interest. Um, one key feature of simple interest is that interest does not itself earn further interest. Now, suppose an amount C is deposited in an account that pays simple interest at the rate I by 100% per annum, then after N years, the deposit will have accumulated to this amount here where your C is the amount deposited in the account your N is the number of years and your I is the rate of interest uh, in this example we are assuming that N is, uh, is an integer so that we can uh, yeah we assume that N is an integer in our example here so it's one year or two years or three years it's complete years. There are no half-year periods, though you can have examples that take uh, half-year periods, even slightly smaller year periods into account. So um, you may ask yourself how this comes about and uh, let me explain that to you. So the key feature about simple interest is that interest does not earn further interest. So when, when someone deposits an amount C for say uh, a period of N years, in the first year the interest they pay is the pay rate of interest I. Now, uh, oh, the rate of interest is I times 100%. In saying this, I simply mean that uh, when uh, you're told that uh, the rate of interest is 10%, it simply means that your i in this case, i is equal to 0 0.1. You see? Such that 0 0.1 times 100% is equal to 10%. If you're told the rate of interest is 32%, our i will be equal to 0 0.32, such that our i times 100% is equal to 32%. Now, uh, since simple interest, uh, interest does not earn further interest, in the first year, the interest this guy will receive will be IC at the end of the year. At the end of the next year, again, he will receive IC. At the end of the third year, he will receive IC. This is the interest this guy will receive each year because interest itself does not earn further interest he only earns interest on his initial deposit of C so um, 
at the end of n years, if uh, at the end of year n, he'll receive another IC. IC, 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 all the way to year n. So if you're asked what is the accumulated value of C at I, uh, at a rate of interest I, you'd simply add this, uh, this interest that he receives over n years, and then of course he gets back his first uh, deposit, which is C. So this would be C plus these ICs are I C times times n. There are n of them over n years. This simply translates to which is equal to C into one plus n i. This is how the simple interest formula comes about. Now, just to give you a quick example, uh, suppose someone has a A quick example for, for this here. Suppose uh, someone invests a thousand pounds in a bank account over a period of two years at 24% uh, rate of interest. How much would this, uh, will this amount uh, accumulate to at the end of the investment period? The formula we need to use is this. Our C is a thousand into one plus our N is two years. And our I, 24% is the rate of interest. This is 0 0.24 times a hundred percent. Our I is 0 0.24. So this is 1000 into one plus 0 0.48. So the accumulated value at the end of the second year of investment is 1,480 pounds. Now due to time constraint, uh, time constraint I will have to uh, cover compound interest in my next video. Thank you very much for watching this video. Check, uh, check for the next part to see what I have to say about compound interest.